flaming dragon Friday. And I swear to all the gods, what, whatever you believe in, the under will hit today, David. <sighs> You've done I, that before. I, I got, no, I got us. before. I Look at that us. face. I got us. I do want to say, though, because we have a packed show that we got to get to. I watched Fallout, first episode of Fallout last night. Gasoline. Really? Yes. What'd you watch it on? Prime. It's on Prime. Wow, well, Prime. It's on That's Prime. It. Ready I'm and willing. You, I never played the game or anything like that. Fire. The, the first 15 minutes, I knew it was about, about to be really good. After, after I saw who was in it, too. So you don't need to have played the game to enjoy the show? No. It's a, no, it's a nuclear fallout. Yeah. Like, you get the, get the idea. But That's I what mean, it's it, going to be. That's what the game is. I can follow that. I'm yeah. going to tell you, you got kids out there, like, it gets... From a gore standpoint, like it gets thick quickly. I was kind of confused at first on what was going on, but if you haven't seen it, I want us to be able to talk about it. All right, I want us to be able to talk about it, especially in the Booster Club too. Look, I'll give it. A, I'll give it a watch for sure. Oh, you! I'm t- I'll, watch, I'll watch, watch the, the first, first episode. Today. I know you've been all hot and heavy on Shogun, and that's that's great. I haven't checked that out yet. I got to get that Hulu. You know, I've been trying to put that put that on y'all for weeks. I, no one want to wants to watch what Blaine says. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I get that. Watch Dune. Watch Dune. Hated it, obviously. No, I didn't. Dune um, 2 comes didn't. out on Prime I just, April I just hope that Dune 2 is the best movie I've ever seen to make the first it's investment. It's one of the best it. I've seen in a while. Mm, I, I hope so. Other than Lady Ballers. I hope so. Yeah, Lady Ballers is the best movie I've seen ever, actually. O.J. Simpson dies at 76. Kentucky basketball is finalizing a deal with the Pope. And Bryson DeChambeau shoots seven under to lead the Masters. But we all know that ain't going to last. I'm Jake Crane. It's a Flaming Dragon Friday, and let's hit the under people here at Crane & Company. Now, we all know that spring practice is vitally important to building a team. You don't build a team during fall camp. You do it during winter workouts, spring practice, and then summer workouts. But when it comes to the game, it is exactly like the Senior Bowl week. The practices are way more important. But what if there was a way to make the spring games more beneficial and entertaining? Well, there's a pretty simple way to do it. Be able to play other teams for your spring game. Now, I'm not saying that Ohio State has to play Florida State. That would be great. I'm not saying that USC has has to play Kentucky, but that would be great. You could also keep it in state. Auburn and UAB, Alabama and Troy, because it's just a scrimmage. It's not like during the season where if you lose, it really does count. But you're not going to lose anything from an injury standpoint. You're playing full speed regardless. You're not going to know exactly what the other side of the ball is doing. When you play each other in an inner squad, you know the checks, you know the calls, you know the formations. And even if you try not to hear it, you want to play well, so you're going to take advantage of it. Another thing that it gives you the ability to do is to be able to bring more people in to watch, not only at the stadium, which you could play it at a neutral site. That would be pretty cool or go on the road to play it but you could also put it on TV. And we all know they want to make more money anyway, and everybody would watch that style of spring game. So in reality, it doesn't hurt anything. It only adds positivity to it. So why not? We've seen coaches like Hugh Freeze and others really want to get this done because they know it simulates the season more than an inner squad game does, more than a game where you change the rules and it just turns into really a game of tic-tac-toe with the defense scoring points, the offense uh, down 27 nothing to start, mixing up the time. It's just not realistic. With this way, everybody wins. All right, I'm going to bring in my co-host, former Michigan quarterback David Cohn. And look, it's Friday. So Keep on a blimp. Am I right? <laughs> this is flaming Flacco. Hey. Two not. Oh, you seem confident today. You seem confident. I am confident today. He swore by uh, every deity there let's is. Go, yeah, let's go one and a half. One and a half. One and a half. Good. Jake. Great. Grand. One and a half. If you don't know, if it's your first time joining the show, on Fridays, we cannot use my brother's government name. 
I can't say it twice, or we can't say it twice. David really never says it, to be honest with you. I don't know who that guy is. Yeah, me either. I'm just going to pretend like he's not here. Yeah, so we'll if you're kind of confused, you're just joining us. It's Flame and Dragon Friday. Get used to it. Remember, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. We appreciate you guys joining us. Whatever platform, whether you're listening, whether you're watching, you're in the trust tree, the booster club, and we're going to win the water cooler. But, Conathan, mm. do you like my spring game mm. idea? I like it. I think that a Good, that's spring all I needed to hear for. No, exhibition no. Uh, could be done in a way that makes the spring game a little bit more like a game. You know, for a lot of people who don't keep up with spring practices or the spring game, it really is just like a practice with different situational elements, yes. right? Uh, so I like the idea of having something in the spring that's a little bit more like a game. I don't think you would increase the chances of injury that much more. Guys are already getting hurt in spring practice. Guys get hurt uh, doing drills on air sometimes. Now, the thing is, you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't do, uh, play an exhibition against a conference opponent. No. Right? So no. Alabama and Auburn aren't going to play an exhibition. You probably wouldn't play an exhibition against an in-state out-of-conference rival. So Florida and Florida State no. probably aren't going to be playing. But the idea of Georgia and Georgia Southern, or like you said, Alabama and Troy, I really like that idea. And plus, we had been talking about ways for these quote-unquote group of five schools to be able to make revenue. You know, they get paid a lot to go play these big powerhouse power five schools. That could be a good way to do it because I'd rather watch Georgia and Georgia Southern play in a spring exhibition rather than in the fall. Without a doubt. And you know? if we get this breakaway that everybody's talking about and all of a sudden you've got these super conferences where you're playing nothing but an in-conference schedule every game for the regular season, which, I mean, there's a legitimate threat of that happening. This is one way to kind of let them, if you split the gate, let's say Auburn plays Troy and they play at Jordan-Hare. Why not split the gate? are playing Birmingham or something like that. And that way, they get some sort of revenue that they had lost in that quote-unquote cupcake week that we always hear about at the end of the season or starting off the season uh, for some teams. Now, Flaming Dragon, uh, another thing is, you know, when, when you look at, at the way, what you're trying to get out of the spring game, the first thing that the coaches will tell you is just be healthy. We just want to get out of it for healthy. Sure, sure. If I had to pick one thing, let's just be healthy. We always see somebody get hurt at an important spot. I think South Carolina lost their left yep. tackle last year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the second thing is the new guys playing in a game-like situation at the stadium, maybe under the lights, in front of the crowd for the first time. You can see who really steps up and who kind of shies away from it. Because there are guys, and we've seen them all, we've coached them, we've played with them, that are practice All-Americans that look unreal in practice, but they get in the game and they turn into Drew Barrymore from 51st States and just totally forget. We see that on the other end, too. There's some guys that don't practice well at all, but then get in the game and they turn into Booby Miles. Like, it's just <laughs> the truth. So w when you when you look at really what you get out of it, I mean, who's getting hurt here like what what why not do that? i know i like i like your take and i think it'd be good for both parties and one thing to add to that when you go through football every day every week and you get to a spring game whether that's defense or offense you start to figure out what the other side of the ball is doing 100 percent from calls to certain guys if a db would line up against me every other day he would learn the little nuances when it came to how i ran my routes so it'd be harder to get open so i do like when it comes to a spring game you get new faces new guys new bodies and pads, so everything is new, so you can automatically guess what you're doing. Yeah. Sooner or later, when you get to a spring game, whether it's defense and offense, you know what the other side is going to do, so this call should automatically work. You're not getting better, in my opinion, when you do that. So if we do take the week off where everyone goes plays, everybody who's terrible. If that week leads college football, then yeah, I think this is a great idea. If not, you do have that week. I mean, Auburn go lose Lafayette or whatever that is, but I do <laughs> like where your head is at. When it comes to this Seven months is a long time to go without playing, hitting another opponent. Right? For like sure. You stop at bowl season in December and January, and you go all the way to August. That's a long time. I think it would it would look a lot like the NFL preseason game, there right? You go. Like your star quarterback's not playing, and it, your star left tackle doesn't necessarily have to play. Maybe take a series and get him out so you don't increase injury. And then I think you could come to an agreement with other teams like, hey, quarterbacks are still in a different color jersey, or so-and-so players in a different you, color you can, you can mold it, however, and then again, you can Make it situational. Maybe you yeah. didn't get enough red zone stuff during the game. Well, that's fine. It's all hey, let's controlled. let's do it at the end. It's all controlled, and and also the most motivating factor in spring, outside of you know wanting to get better and maybe trying to win a spot, is that game at the end. 
It's just like fall camp. Mm -hmm. You're going through that grind of fall camp knowing that that game is on the horizon. Imagine how much better practices would be. Imagine how much more motivated players would be. And imagine how much more you would get out of the game tape, all that stuff that we've mentioned, if that opponent was different. Because listen, it, it gets very, not boring, but it just gets worn out hitting each other all the time, yeah. hitting the same people all the time. And look, from a defensive standpoint, Right, I would, I would tell my DBs, I know most of the time you are going to know what they are running. Right, Hell, you probably know half the signals. But in your mind, try and put it out. But that's, that's hard to tell a competitor to do that. If I'm fighting for a job at safety, and it's going to come down to how, how that game goes or how the practices went leading up to that game, and I know when you get in dice, when two's on the ball and one's off, that you're running smash or that you're running some sort of combination off the coverage that we're running, if it's an option route, choice route, or something like that, I'm jumping that pass. Oh, I'm going to jump it. We couldn't even run smash anymore in spring practice. I know. Wait, like, China, 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 like, China, it's, right? It's impossible to even call it anymore. Um, who will be the first team and the first coach to implement this? Well, it's my, my, my thinking isn't really who would be the first team. I feel like it'd be like Ole Miss or something like that with Lane Kiffin. Like, okay. Like that yeah. I, I know Hugh Freeze wants to do it, I believe. But I, I'm thinking, is there a rule against it? Like, who would stop you? Well, only if Jim Harbaugh does it. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. If Jim well, Harbaugh they, does yeah, it. Yeah, then they throw you in nah, Guantanamo Bay. Can't, can't do that. And, <laughs> and put electrical shock things on your nipples for, for three months. But we want to know what you think. Uh, do you think spring games should be against other teams? Uh, we got the phone lines opening up 7.15 a.m. Central. That's 8.15 a.m. Eastern. I'm not smart enough to know any of the other time zones. So uh, give us a call, 1-855-236-3228. The fact I still remember that number blows my mind. But something else I remember college, right? Going out, maybe having a couple cold, cold sodas, maybe not feeling good the next day. You know what I wish I had, David? Z-Biotics. It's basically magic, okay? I don't know another way to describe it. What is it? It's a pre-alcoholic probiotic. All right, you, you drink this before you go out, all right, and hang out with the boys, the fellas, maybe the girls. It's girls' night. Maybe it's the bachelorette weekend. I don't know. However you get down, you drink this before, and you don't feel as bad the next day. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't pretend like you don't. I know there's parents driving in the car right now that may be taking kids to school that are nodding their heads going, man, what is this magic and how do I get it? It produces an enzyme that breaks down the byproduct that makes you feel bad the next day. It's as simple as this. Take Z-Biotics before your first sip of alcohol. Drink responsibly. All right, we all know that. And then ensure a good night's sleep for a refreshing tomorrow. Tony, I've tried it. We've all tried it. I swear by it. I will probably have it tonight before we go to Bar Taco because I may have a, a drink or two with, with the wife when she gets done with work. It's got a big horse show this weekend. So get the most out, get the most out of your spring plans by stocking up on Z-Biotics now. So go to zbiotics.com slash booster. Use code booster at checkout to get 15% off your first order. Zbiotics offers a 100% money back guarantee. If, so if you're unsatisfied, which you won't be for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S dot com slash booster with promo code booster at checkout for 15% off. Thanks to Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode and our good times. Zbiotics, it's the good maker. What do we got in the Booster Club? All right, Booster Club, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you donate, it's on topic. It will get read, unless you're Charles Dossett. Then it'll get read at the end <laughs> of the show. All right, we're going to start it off with Arik Kasky. Arik, what is up? Would a reg regional spring game expedition tournament be something that could happen? Let the group of five teams play up with the big boys. So he's basically talking about a like a jamboree. Like then you'd be I think that may be getting, I love where your head's at. <sighs> We're in the same neighborhood. We're just in different houses. I think it would have to be just a one game yeah. against that regional opponent. Because, I mean, in high school, I'll never forget, my senior year, we went down and played Julio Jones and Foley for two quarters, then played C.J. Mosley and Theodore for the third quarter, and D.J. Fluker and the rest of those aliens at McGill Tulin in the fourth quarter. I just think that'd be so. Was much. that already predetermined? That was already predetermined. Okay. Yeah, well, it if it's like done that way, play. yes. If it's a if it's a tournament to where you have to win one game to move on to the next one, then the competitor and you's really going to try and win that yeah, game. Yeah, because no one really, like jamborees. I never cared. Then about. you're going to get hurt. You're going to get injuries if you have that sort of thing in spring. Yeah. You know, well, it just makes me think like, what if? And look, it may be a a murder. Speaking about high school, but. Uh, and, and we're going to get to O.J. Simpson in a minute. Uh, like, if you played, like, the, if the public school played, like, the private school, 
like in the oh, area. Oh God! But see that. Oh God! I, we wish. always dreamed of like that. if we would have played Lee I, Scott, like oh, they would have called the cops. Mur- they wouldn't let it happen. It'd no. be murder. No, no. y'all get sued no, after the game. Time. That's exactly right. All right, let's go to TT. What is up, man? It says no leaf spring games alone. We don't need to make revenue off everything one kid's tuition pays for most of the solid stuff colleges complain about anyways. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, t- to me, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm not even thinking about the revenue. I I'm thinking about what makes the team better. Like, and it's what's better for the fan experience as well. I would much rather watch LSU play Louisiana Tech or somebody like that than see an inter-squad game against each other when they know everything that they're going to do. Plus, one of the best things about the spring game is it gives you a game-like atmosphere for guys to prepare for, right? This would make it even more season-like, even more game-like. So I, I don't think it's about the revenue. That's just kind of the icing on the cake. The if cake it's even which, affected at all. That's, that's exactly I don't know if right revenue at. would even be affected. I mean, Alabama's spring game is going to be on television no and matter they're if they sell play it Alabama or if they play Troy. That's exactly right. All right let's go to Chris. Most of, what's up, Chris? Most of the people that complain about the SEC teams Playing lower competition are usually fans of the teams that can't beat the teams in their own conference and are happy to beat lesser competition. Hmm. Yeah, I, listen, I, I am not one of these guys it's like, oh, it's a cupcake week. The SEC doesn't play anybody. Listen, if you're in a 12, if you're in a 12 round, absolutely knock down, drag out fight every single week, basically, and one of those rounds, you don't hit each other as much, I'm not, I, I'm not gonna hold that against you. And I think it's actually a good thing for these smaller schools to be able to play the bigger schools because they get the money. They're the ones that get paid. Some of these athletic departments survive off the revenue of Arkansas Pine Bluff going to play, you know, Florida or, or somebody, you know, at later in the season. But you look at the rest of the schedule, especially now that you're adding Texas and Oklahoma, there is not an easy schedule in the SEC. I don't think there's an easy schedule in the Big Ten. I don't think that's just to the SEC, but for some reason, the Southeastern Conference, and I think it's a jealousy thing at, at some point, gets hated on because they have one week where they don't play you know, the, the top dogs all the time. But then you look at, at like Florida and their non-conference. You look at who LSU's played. You look at Alabama playing Texas last year. I, just, I, I, I agree with the sentiment that you're saying, but I, I don't think that's just tailored to the SEC. I think we get it a little bit of everywhere. Hmm. Right, go yeah, ahead. go ahead. Let's go to Amy. She says, what if the FCS should play someone like the ACC? Would y'all be okay with something like that? Like in the spring game? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. That's, that, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that at all. What if North Dakota State went and played? So that'd be good for both teams. Mm-hmm. That'd be good for both teams. And, and look, the reason that like Alabama doesn't play UAB, you know, really during the regular season, or Auburn doesn't play Troy, is because if you lose that game, I'm talking about during the regular season, it's really, really tough to come back from that, like in state. It's one thing to lose to like La Monroe, like a smaller team out, outside of state. It's another thing to lose to a team inside the state. But in the spring game, it's a scrimmage. Like you can't sit here. It, it's like in basketball, I'll give you an example. Auburn, 2019, lost to Barry College in an exhibition game and then went and made the final four. Nobody, w- once you made that run, nobody gave a damn about the Barry College game because you made the Final Four. If you go and let's say you tie or you barely lose a game to a smaller school in the spring game, then you go make the college football playoff, nobody is going to care about that, that quote-unquote loss in the spring game. So I don't buy into that narrative. All right, one more. Let's go to PD. It says, on spring games, NFL preseason practices often turn into fistfights, but this happened in college too. We do see that a lot. Well, well yeah. I'm not saying it wouldn't happen, but I don't think there would be some epidemic of guys it just turning into the longest yard. Yeah. You know, it's just like the, the odds of there being a fight during a game in the regular season. Guys are competitive. Guys are gassed up. They're ready to play. You know, they've been waiting for this moment. They're ready to hit somebody else. But it, on that same vein, if a fight does break out, what a great teaching moment for your team and the other team. Hey, 15-yard penalty. You would be kicked out of the game. You would be kicked out of the game. You actually control that, and it doesn't cost you during the regular season. Not that I want people to fight, but that goes back to the, hey, we're learning how to play. We're learning how to keep our composure. We're learning how to win with class, lose with class. I just I just think it could be positive just all the way around. But, David, there's some news breaking yesterday. Speaking of football. O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. Sounds like it was prostate cancer. I feel like this guy is the biggest villain in sports history. And I say that because even when the news broke yesterday, we had people coming in here, you know, just saying like, hey, did you hear about the OJ Simpson news? Who wouldn't have even known about him 
had it just been for the illustrious football career. And man, did he have a good one. Yeah. But so did Jim Brown. So did a lot of guys from that era who were really great running backs who just wouldn't have captivated the nation's attention. So you know, I think that he really has become the greatest villain in sports. I wanted to see what you guys thought. Yeah, it's, it's him or Aaron Hernandez, right? Those two, I mean, because again, we have to be able to separate the player from the person, you know, and and this is in the way that that I think about it. I was very disappointed to see the Heisman yesterday on social media put out this, you know, glowing review of OJ Simpson, yet they won't give Reggie Bush's Heisman back. Like, and I look, I get it. OJ Simpson was acquitted. Okay. But let's be honest, I think he did it. I'll tell you right he now. He did other stuff after that, too. He did other stuff yeah, after yeah. that, too. Robbery. Like, I think he did it. I mean, he wrote a book called If I Did It, mm-hmm. you know, and then said exactly how I'd do it. Um, I, I think O.J. Simpson, to me, I'm not going to—I don't like to talk bad about the dead. I, I, I really don't. But that doesn't mean that I can't sit here and, and opine on what I think you did and how you lived your life. I think you were a double murderer, dog. That's what I think. I've got no—I sim- I hate it for the family. I grieve for them. They've done nothing wrong. I don't hold them in the same aura that I hold O.J. Simpson in, but I was, yeah, I think that I think the world's a better place O.J. Simpson's out of it, to be honest with you. Mm. I, that's just how I feel about it. Yeah, it's not like the murder trials were a one-off situation. No. I mean, he went from the golden boy of not only the NFL, but Hollywood, really. I mean, he was just like lo- beloved Captivated. in all of yeah. California and Los Angeles, high society. And then after the murder trials of 94, 95, he was in trouble all the time. Yeah, I'm not surprised by this. I'll talk about the, I mean, I'll talk about the dead. If there's a if there's a football team that, down south, the devil and them just got a lot better. Yeah. A lot better. And they're probably pretty stoked about it. But look, you know, it kind of goes back to, and we talk about it all the time, some guys, and, you know, he got to live it out and play his football career, but some guys, the best football players, we'll never see. We'll never see step on really on a football field because of the mistakes they have made. And OJ did it after he, you know, got everything done. And look, the, the he's, Deuce isn't loose anymore. Mm. All right, they caught him. So I think he's a scumbag. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and just say you hate to see somebody go, but, you know, I think the world's a better place all for it. Were you old enough to remember the Bronco chase at no. all? Okay, so no, I was I just know. barely old enough. So I would have been six years old at that time. I didn't understand the gravity of the situation under then, oh, hey, he used to be a really good football player, and now there's, you know, he could possibly be arrested for murder. I remember the Bronco chase thing we were watching on the news. They cut away from the NBA finals for that. Yeah. Like 90. 90- Five million people watched that or something. That's insane. So I was just old enough for that to be like seared in my brain. I didn't really understand the race part of it at that time. I mean, when that trial got over, people were deciding whether they wanted this guy to go to jail or not just based off his race, not whether or not he did it. I mean, like, the, I remember the news station showing like a group of white people and a group of black people just either being depressed or celebrating mm-hmm. the verdict of that. And Family Guy, South Park, all of them have done spoofs. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, it's and and it's been hilarious when they've done it. But yeah, I again, hell of a player, terrible person. I will say one thing about his playing career. He was the first player to rush for over 2,000 yards, okay? And he did that when it was a 14-game season. So his 143 rush yards per game in the 1973 season when he won MVP was the best ever in a single season. The next closest is Jim Brown, a full 10 yards per game behind him. Oh, I mean, he was, to be honest with you, you blew it, man. Who's the top three villain in sports? OJ. OJ. Aaron Hernandez. At least there was closure there. At least he was, like, punished. Right. With that, that's Hernandez. true. With that's OJ, true. OJ, like, there was no. He was basically like, a serial killer. Yeah. I mean, uh, who would be three? Who would be three? Because you can't just take like villains inside the ring or inside the on the field or something. And no, it has no, to be no, 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 no. And I, I don't like, think Flo- can, Floyd Mayweather Jr. is a, a is a Pete great Rose a villain? Player, but, yeah, that's another example. Like a great. Those are great. But see, like villains, I think but not on this level. Yeah. No. Like it's it's hard. Even I mean, Barry murder, Bonds yeah. and steroids, I don't think is Michael Vick supposed to murder with the dog. Michael Vick. That, that's 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 a good one. That's a good one. I mean, y'all are electrocuting dogs, man. Yeah, that's a good um, one. that's he would be in the running. We did like a bracket last year. Yeah, I think we did a. Villains. Villains. That's right. I was thinking we got about that. Who all was on that, that thing? Yeah. Yeah. Who who is who would be your top three villains in sports? In the comments, in the chat, uh, let us or remember if you donate it, we'll get rid if it's on topic, but. If you're going to run for all those yards, regardless if you're a bad person or not, you better be in good shape. All right? And with FitBod, you can look like an NFL running back, too. Summer's almost here. It's beach season, y'all. All right? It's time to take your shirt off. All right? And let everybody know what's been going on. All right? Hopefully, you stuck to that New Year's resolution, and you're seeing the benefits. You're feeling good when you look in the mirror, walking out to the pool, 
you know, it's it's I was a fat kid when I was younger, was afraid to take <laughs> my shirt off at the pool. But now, listen, they're lucky if I ever wear a shirt. So <laughs> FitBod, get you where you need to be. And sticking to the same old routine, David, it can lead to a plateau in results, even as you get stronger. Don't get bored, right? It's, it's I'm not, not to get coach. bored when you're doing the same thing over and over again. Like, I don't know, playing against your team in the spring game. What is FitBod? Well, it's an app that creates personalized workouts based on your goals, abilities, gym setup. It helps you track and visualize your progress along the way, and it learns from your previous workouts and adapts as you improve. It switches it up. It keeps the body guessing, all right, which is what you want. So add FitBod to your workout essentials today. Join FitBod to get your personalized workout plan, and you get 25% off your subscription, or you can try the app free at FitBod.me slash booster. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash booster. And if you haven't been working out for a while and you want to get back on the horse, FitBot is the way to go. I'm telling you guys, it is the absolute move. All right. Let's get to it. We got some of these OJ memes some, real quick. Uh, some memes for us? Oh, OJ memes. Come on. All right. So we got SpongeBob right here. It says, OJ getting to hell and trying to find the man that took his wife's life. <laughs> it's him staring at a wanted poster and it's him. <laughs> Oh, no. That's a pretty good... These were all over the internet yesterday. What did, what did Norm, Norm McDonald said on the SNL back in the days? Like, O.J. Simpson said that he would take a bullet for Nicole Brown Simpson. What bad luck that the only person who would die for you... <laughs> was the one who killed, killed you. you. That's, yeah. it's, that's true. Uh, this one, it's got the, the, the white Bronco, that chase you were talking about, but it's got, like, wings, like it's ascending, but it looks like it's descending, like coming down. That was a pretty good one. All right, let's go to the next one. This one is from the Babylon Bee, our friends over there. It says, police slowly escort white hearse containing O.J. Simpson. It's just basically the Bronco, um, wait, like, photoshopped with a hearse on the back of it. That's, uh, they don't miss. Seth and them don't miss yeah, over there at the Babylon Bee. All right, next one. Okay, this is the one I put in there. Two people who no longer exist. Is that are, Bruce Jenner? Yes, the one on the left is a picture of Bruce Jenner as Bruce Jenner. And then the one on the right is O.J. Simpson. I thought that All was right, that perfect. One, that one's pretty good. I thought that perfect. was pretty good. All right, do we have one more or is that it? All right, here we go. Last one. Uh, this is Babylon B again. OJ Simpson excited for God to tell him who the real killer was. <laughs> All right, that's, oh, there's a couple more. It's like, that's, that's. This one, uh, I can't see who this is from, but it said OJ Simpson it's allowed to remain living after coffin doesn't fit. <laughs> a rare win from the onion there. A rare dub from the onion. Oh, my goodness. All right, here's the last one. From Poe's Law, Esquire, Poe's Lawyer, Khloe Kardashian is the only woman to ever lose three oh, fathers. No. Oh, oh, y'all. Wow. Oh, that that's, one, uh, that's tough. To that's, that, that one's, that one was deep. That's, that's, that was a that's good find. Uh, that was a good find. That's great. You know, well done, but wow. whoo. Uh, Hard to laugh at some of them. It, I mean, it is. Like, it is, is it? but then, it, again, it's, it's kind of not. That one was very clever. It's kind of not at some of them. All right, boys, Masters, round one. Yep. Bryson DeChambeau, 65, 7 under. Scotty Hot. Scheffler, 6 under, 66. Your boy, Danny Willett. Got put 10 bucks on Danny Willett at, like, plus 100,000. Four under? To win the Masters. He started out four under, which means he'll shoot hey, eight over. Hey, I said, they asked about a dark horse yesterday. I said, Max Homa, mm -hmm. four under. How's Hideki Matsu? Yama doing. Yeah, how's he doing, Flaming Dragon? I don't want to hear any me so sorries. <laughs> All right? The thing I sat here and bereaved in you. <laughs> I bereaved in you! I bereaved in you so much that I bet a lot of someone else's money on it. All right? You're going to have to call Shohei. Not me. <laughs> Do you said he's going to have to commit Sepku? Yeah, you can know. Look, you don't make the cut. It's Sepku on the course. <laughs> <laughs> on the 18th green? Yeah. Your Dang. family's flying out and everything. That's tough. Think and you that, said, that, think and, that I bereaved in you. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, we got a long way to go. Uh, just watching those guys yesterday. Um, Scheffler, man. Tiger. All right, so Tiger was one under through, what was it, 13? 13. Something like one that. under on the day. So they're going to finish today. The weather oh, got yes, bad, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it got dark. Uh, I believe oh, it hit the same. Darkness. I'm sorry. The nice Tiger doesn't hit the same. He's one under, right? I, that's what I heard. He's one under. Like, it's, yeah. it, it, what did you expect? Like, young, you know what? I'm not falling this trap. And this is one of those times where I fall in the trap. Learning. And I say we'll his it. name. He's learning. I'm evolving. Listen, I, I think, 
A lot of people are still in this thing. One under I, through 13. One under through 13. Like, come on, man. It's like round one. Give the man a break. No, I won't. Yeah, it could be four over like Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, but no, uh, look, it's, it's, it was a good day yesterday. Can DeShambo keep this up? I, I, I would well, remember live guys um, play 54 hole tournaments. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Well, the Masters 72 holes, buddy. Yeah. No, and, and look, DeShambo's, they've played 72 holes. They, yeah, they have. Like, I, I don't think that has much of a difference. Mm-hmm. I don't think. DeShambo to me is very hot or cold. Like that leg press machine last night got its ass kicked. You best believe God, that. Guys, there's something about DeShambo just you don't like. It's he's kind of got something that. about him. Yeah. He's got the private school kid written all over him. Like, well, not that I his mean, dad like pulls up in a yacht. Well, it's not his of, golf. They yeah, it's, I know. Well, he's not poor. I know. It's not. Look, there's private school kids out there that that aren't like that. But then there's True. the ones that like shove it in your face. Like my dad's got a better seat you than your dad, man. It's like yeah, my dad invented. My dad invented Twizzlers, man. My dad invented yogurt. <laughs> you invented yogurt? You ever had a gogurt before? <laughs> he invented pops. gogurts? That's pops. That dude made a ton of money. But no, it's going to be fun to watch around. One two. thing in terms of, you're talking about the longevity or the um, stamina, Tiger's going to have to play 23 holes today, yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's one thing to keep in mind. We'll find out if that, how yeah. ready that body is. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, UFC 300. We've been talking about previewing this this week. Look, a lot of huge fights here for a big event for Dana and the boys over there. Alex Pereira is going to fight Jamal Hill. That's at 2.05. Uh, we got the Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway fight, which I'm super stoked about. That's yeah, at 155. Olivera is fighting someone who's I can't fighting. even pronounce, but he's Armenian-Russian. So uh, should probably uh, should probably take him. He's got, uh, this is it. Yeah. Like, he's got nothing else. I mean, Aljo Sterling's fighting in the prelims. That's how you know the card is stacked. No, this card is stacked. You have Holly Holm fighting... Uh, you have Wei Li, Zhang Wei Li fighting too, who that's one of the women UFC fighters that I actually really enjoy watching. No, this card is absolutely stacked. I'm gonna get this one. I'm gonna get yeah, this one tonight and, and watch it. But I think Hollow, I think Max Holloway beats Gaethje tonight. Okay, so that's interesting. That's one I had too. So I had three bets here right now. I, I like the Max Holloway. You can get him at plus money, mm-hmm. plus one thirty. I also like uh, this Devinson uh, Figueredo. Wins by uh, KO, TKO, or DQ. That's plus money at plus 175. And then a four-fighter parlay here. The same fighter there, Figueredo, with um, Pereira, Bo Nickel, yeah, and Aljo Nickel. Sterling. That's a four-fighter parlay at plus 272. That Look, I'm, I'm, that Justin Gay Max Holloway fight is going to be three guys just kicking shit at each other for three rounds, five rounds. Yeah. It's, like, those two guys, those are the type of fights you don't walk, they don't feel each other out. Right? Feeling each other out would be, they're going to hit each other in the face probably every second of this fight. Like a Diaz and those fight. are my favorite type of fights. It's like when the Diaz brothers fight. Like There's no dancing around. It's like, why does my face look like a Max Holloway's fight? in that realm with the Diaz brothers, in my opinion. If you watch Max's fights, which I've seen most of them, like Max wants to get in there and brawl. And so does Justin Gaethje. Well, I, Bo Nichols, the one that that I'm excited about, five and zero, I, I believe. I, he started out pretty hot. I want to see if he can keep it going. He's like uh, minus twelve. There you, Bo Nickel, you're talking about? Yeah, minus twenty one hundred right now. That's why I put him in my parlay uh, to win. No, I, look, I I, I I think this card. We talked about, you know, the last card was really deep that that mm-hmm. we talked about the on one the one in Miami. Um, but this one is about as deep as I can remember. And there's no telling how many people are going to buy this pay-per-view or watch on ESPN. Plus I can't wait. Or whatever, because I'm definitely going to check it out. Decently. We got some callers today, I think, that want to talk UFC yeah. as well. Yeah, so. a, a couple people let us know they wanted to call and, and, and talk a little uh, little UFC and, and give some of those matchups as well. But want to get to our video here with the new honorable, all right, Judge Walsh. Okay, now I screwed up and, and didn't call him by you know his professional name. Uh, you're lucky you're not in jail right you. now, sir. This is a lot of fun. Uh, don't go anywhere after because we're going to get into uh, a bunch more and then get into calls. Let's go ahead and play the video. All right, everybody, show respect. We got a judge in here. All right, we're very very excited. And after the smash hit show that's that's been released, Daily Wire, check it out. Judge, what do you do for a living? I'm an exotic dancer. Like a salsa. Like the pole in the middle of the room. Stripper. All rise for the Honorable Judge Walsh. Obviously, Matt Walsh uh, is going to join us, the Matt Walsh Show. We're very excited. We've had coaches, players, politicians, I mean, pretty much everything, but we have never had a judge. So, Matt, welcome uh, and congratulations on the new show. Are you talking to me? Yes. Excuse me. I didn't recognize you because I didn't know. 
I'm not, I'm, is there a mat in here somewhere? Because I, uh, I know, I know. Your I, honor. Here, your, 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 your honor. honor. Listen, listen. First off, bailiff, get yes, him out right, of here. All right, I'm sorry, I ruined it early. Uh, the honest. honorable. I realize I, I'm not wearing the robe. I understand. That's that's, that's, judge, that's my mistake. Judge is always a judge. Um, Look, I'm a vet in the game. Sometimes you got to take a strike. You know, sometimes you just got to see the fastball. But uh, the honorable Matt Walsh, uh, Matt. First off, uh, you know we have a couple cases, a, a couple things that that we need your your judgment on. But how have you enjoyed, you know, being one of the most influential now minds behind the bench? Uh, yeah, it's been great. I mean, obviously, uh, and I think I think there's been wide agreement on this from people. A lot of legal scholars and analysts yeah. have watched uh, the show. And I've heard, I don't want to, I'm not going to name drop because I don't believe in that, but I've heard from uh, several uh, well-known judges, including one on the Supreme Court, uh, who say that I'm clearly the preeminent mm-hmm. legal mind in, in, in the country now. And, and that's something that, that's a responsibility that I take very seriously. Uh, so. yeah. Now, will you go, uh, will you be on the Supreme Court one day? Is that somewhere you're that, looking is that to go? somewhere you're... <laughs> I, I'd, be, I'd be willing to accept, mm-hmm. well, well, I'll say this, I'd be willing to consider uh, a nomination. I would be willing to do that. I was, obviously have a lot going on. Mm-hmm. I've got a podcast. So if they did come to me and they nominated me, i say, well, I have a podcast. Like, I still need to do the podcast. But yeah. uh, can we make it work with my schedule? I, we could talk about it. There's only so many sacrifices you can make. That's, exactly that's, right. that's my point. That's yeah, what I've exactly. said. That's, that's my whole point. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let's go ahead and get into this because you know, we have a, a couple things that, that we need you to help clear up. And, and obviously with you know, the rapport you've built, being, being the judge that you are. And I think, uh, Blaine, you're going to present the— Yes, our honorable, distinguished— um, Judge Mr. Walsh here. We're going to start with, I'm a Yankees fan myself. I don't know if you know this, but there's We're a sorry case. For you. Andrew Rector. All right. I'm sorry, what? His name's Andrew Rector. Oh, okay. Rector. You can take that where you want to. Okay. Um, $10 million defamation case. Went to a Yankees game. Okay. Fell asleep mm. at the Yankees game. And the announcers said he was oblivious. And this is not the place you come to sleep. After hearing that, um, Andrew, in his complaint, Said Rector, the announcers, the Yankees organization unendingly verbally abused and had a crusade out against him. I want to know what your ruling would be on this case. So just to make sure I have the facts of the case clear. So this is just a normal guy. Normal dude. And he fell asleep at the game. At the game. Uh... And then the announcers made fun of him, and now he's suing. Did, did he win the case, or is that still ongoing? That's, That's for you to decide. I yes, mean, we're, we're, like, okay. And he's suing for ten million for defamation. Ten mil. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is, this is a tough case because on on the one hand, uh, if you go to a public event and you fall asleep, you I think you deserve to get made fun of for that. Yes, I agree. On the other hand, baseball is so boring that I can't blame you oh. for falling asleep. Ooh, objection. Ooh. So it it you know. So that, that's that's what makes this difficult, but I think uh, I think ultimately I'd have to side with the you know if I'm the announcer and I see that I yeah. of course you have to of course that, yeah that's, and then let me go from the, from the announcer's perspective again because baseball is so boring what else are you going to talk about <laughs> <laughs> they made the bases bigger Matt you know what it's boring yeah. trying to, everything they do to shorten the game well it's and maybe you get a plea deal Aaron Judge signs a bat or something you save 10 mil and everybody wins right I mean I get, you're not coming back from that if you're that guy Andrew that's national television yeah you got reamed for 10 minutes I mean I get it I get it I, I, I would side stress? I would side with the judge here Maybe next time you just don't go to sleep. How about that? Yeah. Or just don't go to Yankees game. Be a Braves yeah. fan. Or yeah. a Rangers fan. Be like a Braves David. fan. Um, all right. Congrats on the show. Uh, I will say you're a year too late um, because we had an incredible fantasy football dispute here. And we had Ben Shapiro adjudicate our situation. I was not happy with the outcome, so I wish you had been a judge. Still an earlier. appeals court, I think. Uh, uh, so maybe I can appeal to you at some point um, because Blaine still has my tumbler. That's neither here nor there, but you're an NFL fan, so we have to talk about Jerry Jones, all right? Yeah. Jerry Jones was sued over a, a female's buttocks. Would you like me to explain the details of the case? August 2012... Sure. Janelle Corello filed suit against the Dallas Cowboys and team owner Jerry Jones for severe burns she suffered on her buttocks while sitting on a bench outside of a scrimmage. And that was in August 2010. So the burns were so severe that she waited 24 months to take legal action. The bench was uncovered and openly exposed to the extremely hot August sun, the lawsuit says. And Carrillo's attorney claims she suffered mental anguish, physical pain, and disfigurement as a result of her wounds, though Carrillo didn't even realize she was injured in the first place. Um, how would you rule in this case? So, again, just reviewing the facts of the case. So there was a bench that was just sitting there, mm-hmm. and it's sunny out. Dallas Cowboys so the bench scrimmage. was hot. 
And it was black, black bench. Black bench. Mm. And she sat with her butt on the bench. Yep. And her, her butt was cooking in the heat. And she didn't even realize. How long was she? How long was the butt making contact with the bench? Do we know? Mm. Uh, that's a wonderful question. We, I need these answers, yes. Dave. Okay, we uh, have to have these answers and minutes, the judge. And minutes, <laughs> minutes and minutes and minutes and minutes. Multiple minutes. She didn't realize at first. Like, how did she know? Not even. She didn't even file a lawsuit for twenty-four months. But severe. It, so it, it severe took two burn. years for her to file a lawsuit. Yes. Mm. And that's when she realized. All that time, she was suffering the emotional damage of having her butt and burn. physical anguish. Mm. Physical anguish here as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to side with Jerry Jones on mm. Jerry. Big win for Jerry. Which I, I don't side with him on Let's very much. Let's see if I can get a couple more this fall. Yeah. Ravens and Cowboys come the together. Ravens, oh, wow! Look, look the at Ravens that. Boys. Cowboys, wow! <laughs> That's what they called us in college. Uh, Matt, or excuse me, Honorable Judge Walsh. Um, please, two. I know one more, and Strike I'm in two. contempt. Right. I believe those are the rules. I got a pretty, uh, pretty interesting one for you. Okay. In 2019, so I'm gonna go ahead because this is somewhat still ongoing. A Georgia Southern quarterback was arrested in the state of South Carolina, pulled over and arrested, all right, because a cop thought that bird poop was cocaine. Turn to pee. You're kidding me. Turn to pee, man. (laughs) Some cocaine, ain't it? You can see it on the windshield. That's not bird poop. I swear to God, that's bird dude. That's not bird poop. He thought he had cocaine on the ass. 100% true. Can I, wait, can I ask a question? Just Go, sh- yes, it's your court. Uh, because I don't, I, I say no to drugs. Good. It's and a, yes, it's success. Yeah, exactly. So I don't have experience with it. Is cocaine a sticky substance that you would, is that what you do with cocaine? I've looked, I don't know. I've had friends Blaine? tell me it depends, how, <laughs> it, depends, <laughs> it depends how hot it is in the room. Oh. Well, it, Go ahead. <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm so anti. I don't think not I don't compared even, to boot. Bur- what is? Bur- I didn't even know cocaine is. That's how yeah. anti drug I am. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. Me neither. I just saw this case and thought it'd be interesting. I, I've I know what bird poop is, and again, like my brother said, we've had friends that have had problems, and at least the way they've described it, there have not been many similarities. Now, okay, my my kind of the adjudication of this is the police officer uh, resigned especially after it was found out that he was sending lewd pictures uh, to females in his uniform while on duty, but that's... It's a separate case. That's a separate case. It's, there's a lot to unpack here. Should, should you be allowed to be a police officer if you cannot tell the difference between bird poop and cocaine? Uh, what, do we know what his explanation was for this? So I will he say... He did run a test. I will right? say... Test I will say, as... And I feel like this is still a waste of time, but he got the little, you know, the little shaker they have. He put the the bird poop in there and it did turn pink. And it did wait, turn wait, pink. Appara- <laughs> which oh, which no, apparently no, means cocaine. How do you leave that out? Well, well, because it's either one of two things. Either it was a bad t- listen, I was a football coach. We need the quarterback. Um <laughs> it either, either, either it was a bad test, or he happened to have some drugged out, coked out bird take a dump on his on his car. So you're accusing the bird now. Now, well, now the well, bird. It happened Let's, with that bear. It, it happened with, with that the bear. bear. We made a whole you movie know. about it, man. Oh, yeah. So this, this innocent bird you're now defaming as a as a Well, is it really innocent? Is it pooping on people's cars? Yes, while well, on cocaine, that's what apparently. Look, I feel like there's so many facts of this case that I'm not being told. That's all. That, that's, that's all we judge, know. Your Honor, that's, that's all. all we know. But it just, it's scary to think we live in a world where we can't tell the difference between bird poop and cocaine. Okay. I'm the judge here, aren't I? Yeah, 100%. I'll tell you what my ruling is. Please. Anything in or around your car, test positive for drugs, life, you're going to jail. For- <laughs> 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 we need the quarterback. I'm I'm telling telling you, bro, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, look, it's, it's, oh, it's, it is what it is. I will say, I do believe he was the backup quarterback, so maybe George. Look, we need depth at the position, okay? Um, I have one that's just- Which a- quarterback is this, by the way? So he was at Georgia Southern. Yeah. Uh, it was Wirtz. It was t- 2019. Georgia Southern is actually it's located in his hometown my in hometown. Statesboro. Georgia Southern. Um, and Paid the bills growing up. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Can't now it's not the resting. big. It's not Georgia. It's not Georgia Tech. It's it's a group of five. So it's Sun Belt or Fun. Of course, Belt. it happened in South Carolina though. Yeah, They're it did always happen. Trying in to South. get us. They They're are always trying to get. That's us. for real. That's but real. I have one here that's just really been really been uh, burning at me, and I and I need your your wise expertise on this. I have a friend of mine who purchased tickets to a hockey game. 
Mm -hmm. okay? Only, you know, he found out upon arrival that it was gay pride night at the hockey game, and he didn't know what to do. Should I leave? Could I sue and get my money back for the tickets? Do I go ahead and go to the game? I've invested this money. He went to the game, and now he's questioning his sexuality. Is there a lawsuit there? Is this about me? Do what? Do what? What's the law? What? What? <laughs> he's questioning his sexuality. Mm -hmm. A little bit. And he wants, and so he wants to, so the, is there a lawsuit against the, the NHL? He bought the tickets and it didn't say anything about gay pride mm -hmm. night. He went, they announced gay pride night. He decided I'll still go to the game. I've when did, when did money. they announce gay pride night? Like the day of. Oh, but it was before he showed up. Before he showed up, but not before he purchased the tickets. Okay, but, he, but it wasn't, so it wasn't like he's sitting down, he's already sitting there, and then they're like, hey, by the way, it's gay pride night. This is before way. he showed up. How did you hear? How did you understand yeah. it, Jake? When Jake, how did it go? <laughs> first off, first off, go. Um, your honorable judge, I would like to uh, ask the court to please strike from the record the questioning of the sexuality <laughs> part. I've already been accused of being in a gay men's choir <laughs> at, a, at a Carolina game, which oh. never happened. I'd never go to a Carolina game. <sighs> um, basically, what happened was, like he said, bought the tickets, right? My wife had never been to a hockey game. Okay, decided to go to the hockey game. Nowhere at any point when we were buying the seats, seats or purchasing the tickets did it say anything about some, you know, gay pride night or, you know, I dress up like a penguin and hang out in the kitchen night or whatever, whatever it is. But we showed up and when we walk in, there are signs. Every, it is just, I don't know another way to put it. It's gay palooza, man. Like, like, I don't know another way to put it. The, the band at the hockey game is dressed up as women, these are men that are dressed up as women and they're playing Shania Twain, I feel like a woman. So like really? all this, very close to home. Very close to home too. Okay, so so, so, but, so now the claim is that you didn't know the gay pride night until you got there? No, 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 no clue. Nobody but, then you walk, but then you walk in, it's a gay explosion. Oh, it is, it is just. Super explosion. It's, it's a festival, it's, it's the Coachella of gay. Explosions gays. everywhere on Jay. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, look. You, you walked in, you walked into the gay explosion, you walked through it. There's a threshold. So that, here's, what, here's what happened. You, you, you encountered the threshold of gayness. Yeah. And there was, a, there was a moment there, it was a moment of choosing. And you could walk through the gayness or you could turn back. You walked through it, so. So, but is there anything to be said for attacking the gayness? But you didn't attack well, it. You, went, you just yeah. went and sat down and watched. You joined the gayness. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I can, I. I guess I can, I'm not, I don't love that ruling. I'm probably going to have to appeal that. But, um, you know, <laughs> moving on, I didn't know that was in, defen be, in, in defense of my client, he's not the only one. We get listeners of our show call in yeah, a, a lot. We've had multiple call in and say, I purchased tickets to this sporting event. I went, there was no announcement of Gay Pride Night until I went to said sporting event. Can I get my money back? I said, look, I'm not a judge. Then all of a sudden, now there's a show yeah. judge. You're your honor. You're here. Well, I thought this about is, it. We, we know this is the world we live in. You got to call ahead. Call ahead and say, hey, listen, is this, is this the gay night? You're going to put that on the fan. I thought for sure the honor. Well, judge look, of say, course, of course, we, uh, the NHL should be disbanded for this alone. So that's, <laughs> that's clear. But, you know, the reality is it's happening. So we know that. So you got to call ahead. I understand that. I understand. You yeah, tell me. I would call. I would call ahead and say, "What's the least gay night that I can go <laughs> watch this event?" Tell me, and I'll schedule. But it's a my, Monday. It's a Thursday in August. Ah, <laughs> Lee, we're putting that on the consumer now. Um, I, I've something that just recently happened that I, I wanted to, you know, obviously get your uh, lawful opinion on. O.J. Simpson passed away. Did he? Yes. Yeah. Right before you walked in this here. Like, like two this seconds ago like, recently? Yeah. Literally like an hour ago. Right oh. when Jay finished that sentence, he died. <laughs> yeah, no, like, right. Lee, this literally, this just happened. Uh, this just, is not a bit. He actually did die? No, he actually yeah. did die. Prostate. 100% okay. prostate. prostate. He, he did die. All right. You're, should O.J. Simpson, even though, because you're a judge, you, you go by the, the book of, of Judge Walsh, right? But it's within the law realm. O.J. was found not guilty. Mm-hmm. Should he still be looked at, even after his passing, as the person who we all know did? We all know he did it. Like, I mean, how, how, how in your realm does, do you separate them? You see that glove? That didn't fit. Yeah. yeah I don't, I, well, I don't separate them. He, he's, he's, a, he's a, a murdering scumbag. That's just, that's, that's, that's what he was. I mean, look, it, we all know he should, he should have died in prison. He should be in prison right now. Agreed. And, uh, and I also believe, listen, people can do horrible, horrible things and be reformed and repent and uh, and if they do, then we should accept that. But there was no reformation or repentance here. No, because he would never admit that he did it. So, 
Um, so that's it, unfortunately. But when he wrote the book, it. if, if little, little if, if I did yeah. it. So not only did he do it, but he taunted it. But yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he made a joke out of it, basically. Which awful. Just, he's a psychopath. Got Finally got tackled. Finally got tackled. Just wondered, do they serve Jesus in hell? Well, now they do. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, the Honorable Judge Walsh, yes. uh, again, thank you for taking time. I know the docket is, is very stacked with you with the cases. And, um, you know, we look forward to maybe adjudicating something around the uh, the NFL draft, too, that I think uh, may be kind of near and dear to your heart. Obviously, I know how big of an NFL fan you are. But uh, in all seriousness, man, the show is fantastic. If you haven't watched Judged on The Daily Wire, you need to go check it out. Uh, Matt's incredible like he is in, in everything that he does, and, and it's really a lot of fun. But any parting thoughts for the judge before Thank you, Your he Honor. Hits the for your I appreciate time. it, Your yes. Honor. Thank, Thank you. you for wish taking I, our I, case. Next, I'll have my gavel with me. That's yeah, nice. we were hoping maybe you'd come in full, like, Yeah, like I thought they were going to, like, you, like, you know, robe, gavel. They're going to carry you in. Yeah, just you know, powdered, you powdered, wig, powdered wig. Powdered yeah, wig. Powdered wig. The whole nine. He actually hates one of those, believe it or not. But uh, we appreciate you joining us. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you check out Judged. It is absolute gold uh, and you're guaranteed to have a good time. <laughs> yeah, so that happened. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> that, that was a lot so of fun. Awesome. That was awesome. Uh, it was, we appreciate Matt sitting down with us and, and adjudicating some of that. We needed to get through that, especially on a Friday. All right. I want to get to this uh, Kentucky hire quickly. Yeah. The phone lines are open. one 855 236 Three two two eight. I almost screwed that one up. But before we get there, listen, it's April, guys. Nobody likes doing taxes, all right? Not CPAs don't even like doing taxes. And maybe you owe back taxes. Or maybe you still have some unfiled returns. I'm not telling, all right? But you need to get that handled. And that stuff can really weigh on your mind, especially when the IRS, well, they're as pissed off as ever, and there's like three times as many of them. I don't know why we're doing this, but we're doing it. Uh, their chief data and analytics officer revealed that the IRS is focused on an enforcement project with an average return on investment of about $6 for every $1 spent. They got to find ways to get more money to Ukraine any way they can, and they're going to do it. But if it's weighing on your mind and you're worried about it, the people at the tax network, they can help. Let them relieve your stress. Because we all know facing the IRS without a professional, it's just not a smart move right? I'm not going to step in the box against DeGrom expecting to you know, get a hit six out of 10 times. I'd rather put Barry Bonds in there for me. So contact the Tax Network USA for their best strategic advice to help reduce or even eliminate your debt, which is obviously huge. Call today at 1-800-245-6000 or visit their website at tnusa.com slash booster. They'll give you a free private consultation on how you can settle your tax debt today. That's tnusa.com slash booster. Uh, go check them out. They can really take a lot off your plate so you have more money to put food on your plate. I like more money and food. And plates. A couple things here. There was uh, some conversation in the Booster Club about the Max Holloway-Justin Gaethje <laughs> fight being canceled. Uh, I did a deep dive on this. Uh, what I can find right now is it says, no, Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway at UFC 300 is not canceled as Google Sites. It has been a tech error. So, We'll keep, you know, we'll keep up with that. And yeah, I, I, I haven't heard that either. I mean, lunch is canceled due to lack of hustle. Lunch has been canceled. Next one up, like we talked about, hey, Scott Drew backed out of the Kentucky job, is going to remain at Baylor, and now Kentucky is finalizing a five-year deal with BYU coach Mark Pope. Mark Pope was a captain on that 1996 mm -hmm. Kentucky team for Rick Pitino. Rick Pitino actually came out in support of Mark Pope being hired. The contract details have just emerged. The five years will be worth $5.5 million per year. The best way to put this in my mind is you got to put it in two different buckets. One, congrats to Mark Pope. I'm excited for Mark Pope. Now, he's going to catch a lot of hell, and it's not his fault, right? He's never won an NCAA tournament game. We watched BYU and, and what happened in the NCAA tournament this year, but he's had success. He was at Utah Valley, obviously, to be able to have a chance to get the Kentucky job. They missed on a lot of guys. They missed on all their top dogs, but that's not Mark Pope's fault. I'm happy for Mark Pope, and I hope he does well, but the problem is his leash is going to be so short, so short, because if he doesn't win early, they're, they'll fire Mitch Barnhart for this. Like, if, if, if he screws this up, they'll fire him for it. Like, that's how, we know how big basketball is at Kentucky. But if it goes bad early for Mark Pope, like, even we saw with Cal, with Kentucky losing games as they shouldn't lose, they lose to a, a, a an opponent that's a lot lesser than them. All like the finger pointing will this stop. Year? Yeah, or, or we'll start. It'll be this guy is, is, is exactly what we thought he was. We missed on all the top dogs. We brought in this mid-coach, whatever, whatever. So that's one bucket. The second bucket is 
This one looks exactly like the Mike Shula Alabama hire. Hmm. Exactly like the Mike Shula Alabama. Why you say hire. that? Because they Alabama missed right on on some guys. Mike Shula ended up getting the job, but he didn't have the best resume before. But he's a former player, right? A big name within the program, mm -hmm. a guy that understands how it's going. But it's not that top level. Look, Mike Shula won nine games one year. They, they had good years under Mike Shula, but this feels like the hire before the next big hire to mm -hmm. me. What happened? Shula gets fired. They miss on some more guys with Rich Rod. They end up with Nick Saban, right? It, this just feels like Kentucky really settled because they had to. The question now becomes, did guys not want to just not want to follow Cal? Did they just not want to? If I'm Dan Hurley, I get it. Why would I leave UConn? I don't know. Even for all that money. We're dominating. I've got the mix right. He'll have 50% of the GDP out of the state of Connecticut before it's said and done, <laughs> right? Scott Drew was the one I thought was going to go. That was one surprised me. He went back, talked to his family. Whenever a coach says, I'm going to pray on it, like we're talking about going back to his place and it's a religious place, he's probably going back there. So Scott Drew, I thought was going to get it. You know, Bruce Pearl was still out there. Rick Patino was still out there. The Kentucky fans are pissed, buddy. The Kentucky fans are, are up in arms. I've, I have not seen this Greg Schiano, Tennessee type vibes, you know, in uproar, stop the steal. Auburn football mm. type vibes. I, this is just down down the list. And look, it may work out. You know, Patino's come out like you said and supported yeah. them. They're circling the wagons. But man, this just for the rest of the SEC, you got to feel good, man. Because if they'd have got Dan Hurley, oh hell, you'd put Dan Hur Dan Hurley at Kentucky yeah. or Nate Oates at Kentucky. Mm. Oh hell, buddy. Mark Pope. Who will it end up being a good hire or bad? No, <laughs> he won't last more than two years. Two. Two. They'll run him out of this place. What a terrible look for Kentucky. It is a bad look. A terrible. This isn't an Alabama situation where you, you miss on some guys but got Kalen DeBoer, right? That This isn't that. You ain't got a guy who's proved nothing. <coughs> Last two years, lost in the first round to Duquesne. Lost to Duquesne. And I watched BYU play. Trust me. I'll never forget number 11. Oh, oh and I'll number never forget number 50. Uh, uh, number 50. Number That's 50. Who I'll you missed never every forget. shot. You Don't lost to UK. You lost to UCLA in the first round this year. What was Cal's problem? He couldn't get the places we needed to go with elite talent. Kentucky, from a basketball school standpoint, is falling apart. I don't know if it'll ever be the same. Really? I don't think it will ever. Could this be the be, step back before the comeback? I still don't believe. I know we had that guy on here who talked. I still don't believe, all right, that they didn't reach out to NATO. That they didn't re you think they didn't reach out reach out to NATOs because of a PR problem, and then you're gonna go hire the head coach from BYU? That's a PR problem. That's not gonna look good. So I would I would rather have NATOs a thousand percent. <laughs> oh yeah, a nobody's thousand saying that. percent. Yeah. This I I'll never understand. This is a terrible look. Well, this is TikTok. like, you know what it reminds me of? There's this TikTok of this girl. They're doing like man on the street stuff, and this guy's interviewing people, and this girl's like yeah, I'm so good looking. Like, I could get anybody here. And he's like, really? You could get anybody here? She's like, yeah, I I could try and kiss anybody get, that walks by. She's rejected seven times in a row? She tries it and gets rejected like seven times in a row. Like, this is just what it feels like. And it's just weird because Kentucky, I think Kentucky is the biggest brand in college basketball. I really believe that. I, now, you can make an argument for, you know, North Carolina and Duke, Kansas. There's other teams. I'm not saying you can't. But Kentucky getting shut down it wasn't like one guy said no, and they went to the second. They got shut down basically by everyone that they wanted and had to go down and get the almond milk. You know what I'm saying? That's not a BYU jug. It's just, you know, if, when it comes to levels of milk, almond milk's way down there for me at least. It's not even milk. It's not as even. As far as I'm concerned. It's really just almond juice. How do you better get have your, cows? You better have your NIL in place right now. You better have the name, image, and likeness structure around this guy to be able to go and get the type of players he needs to get. Yeah, well, the problem, too, is all this negative PR is going to affect recruiting. Like, don't think these yeah. recruits don't sit. And guys that hit the portal that were may thinking about coming back or guys that were may thinking about coming back that, that decide they want to go pro, they see all this negative energy, too. Mm. And, and that's going to hurt them. That's going to hurt them a lot. So, look, like I said, it's not Mark Pope's fault. Good for him. Great for him. Great for him, right? But at the end of the day... I mean, this is Kentucky, dog. Yeah, That's and I basketball. agree. If this doesn't work out, they'll run Barnhard out. No, no, out I'm telling you. Like, there's, there's a, this is a Dylan's drum set situation. You don't touch it. Like, you don't, you can't screw this one up. Like, I mean, he went from Mitch Barnhart to Mitch McConnell standing at the podium, like, 
I, I'm just shocked, man. All right, the phone lines are full. Uh, I do want to say quickly, though, a Frozen Four update. Yesterday, Boston College, huge win over Michigan, four to nothing. They just stomped them. And then Denver, big win over Boston University. So now Denver's Denver always in will it. play against Boston College for the national championship in college hockey. And we talked about if Denver were to play Michigan, the winner of that would have the most national championships all time. So Denver has a chance if they win to, to move up into that category. So shout out to Trey, our director, big yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you, Trey. You and, go, Tra. And again, you can watch that game and you can also listen to it. But if you're going to listen to it, you know what y'all to use? Tell him, son. You want Talk me, to him. You want me to tell him? Talk, Talk to him. him. You all to use Raycon. Yeah. All right, what's Raycon? They're the best headphones out there. Tell him, son. For the best price out there. I kill your father, man. Try to kill my father, man. <laughs> uh, and here's why we're obsessed with Raycon. Feels like an extension of ourselves, right? Optimized gel tips. You can run in them. There's no... Strings that are hitting your arms, they don't fall out. You can customize it to fit your ear perfectly. Gives you eight hours of playtime. Has a 32-hour battery life. I mean, Tom Hanks from Castaway could have listened to this thing for a couple months if he wanted. And the price is good. They're not overpriced like all these earbuds and headphones out here that you're really paying double what you should be paying. Uh, you'll get the quality audio that you know and love at half the price of other premium auto brands. So right now, go to buyraycon.com slash booster to get 20% off your Raycon order, plus free shipping. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash booster to score 20% off and free shipping. Again, that's buyraycon.com slash booster. Raycon, have you heard about it? All right, let's get to them phones there, David. The hey, we're doing good. Let's finish on the under here. We're doing good. I think no I forgot. No one's talking about it. Nobody's talking no about it. No one's talking about it. Let's go to Jonah in Arkansas. Jonah, that what's well? up? Hey, I have a uh, potential uh, problem I need to bring to y'all's attention. Mm. I, f I follow Western State Colorado on, on social media, and our, our friend Blaine here is alma mater. Earlier this week posted a bunch of pictures from their drag show, and I couldn't help but notice one of Blaine. them kind of looked, mm. looked familiar. Oh, really? Familiar how? They went and Jonah, got those you pictures. you want to do this today? No, familiar that's, how, Jonah, Jonah, that's back when he today, was, Jonah. He was the today other walking on dragon. hot coals, bud. Uh, we've always said, big flamer, flamer dragon. And and up there, I mean, that's right next to the Grinch. A lot of people <sighs> don't see it. So if you've, we already got the picture are you of him and Dylan Jonah, are you a plant for you one of these two right here? I haven't planted. Is no, this no, because of the gay man's choir thing? I'm just saying there's controversy on all sides. But mm, okay. there can be evidence. There is evidence. We okay, yeah, I would love to see Jonah, evidence. Jonah, please submit that. I would, I would love, love to, see, to evidence, see that Jonah. evidence. Who knows? Maybe uh, I have some evidence on you, Jonah. Oh, you ever thought about that? Listen, huh? Jonah, you send that in. You know, we'll, we'll, we got a judge Jonah? around here, too. Yeah, we got All a right, judge. We can submit evidence to a judge. Jonah, really do, you, do you rent? Do you own your own house, or what's the deal? <laughs> That's private information. Oh, okay. <laughs> smart. Hey, Jonah. Smart, All Jonah. Right. Yes. All right. <laughs> oh, Jonah, thank you. God yeah. bless you, Jonah. God bless you. Thanks for calling, bro. Hey, hey, you excited about Cal? Coach attention. Cal? Coach Cal, you jacked up? You know, I think I think it's the best hire they could have made. Yeah, better Mark Pope. There's a bunch of Arkansas fans that are pumped. My father-in-law yeah. is pumped. My whole family's pumped. They're already trying to sell merch, trying to say Cal the Hogs and stuff like that. So, mm, I mean, they're, smart. they're fully embracing him. You got to, right? You got to. We'll see. Oh, yeah. It's uh, You got to feel good if you're Arkansas. Yeah. I can't wait for him to let y'all down, Jenna. Good call. <laughs> 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 Thanks. See you yeah, later, yeah, buddy. Have a good day. weekend. See you, Thanks buddy. a lot, man. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to William in Alabama. William, what's up? What's up, guys? William, William what's up? I've talked to you. What's yeah, up, man? from you. Oh, finally got off from work and actually got out of bed. So we're there doing go. good today. Great let's, start. Hey, let's go. Hop out of the bed like you're possessed, but in a good way. Also, before I get to my topic, Flaming Dragon, hashtag mustache and bio. Now. Mm. Mm, is this him? Is it? I, I don't know. Well, mm. All right, keep going. Keep going, William. Mm. So the Preds have clinched the playoff. Yep. Yeah. Barely. I wanted to know. Yeah, barely, but they did it. They, they did didn't it. even make it last year, so yeah. we're, we're taking progress. I didn't make it this year. I just, I didn't either. <laughs> but what do you think their chances are in the tournament itself? Gosh. Let's see. Well, I'll, Dave, you I'll, pull, up the, quick? Hold on, I'll um, pull up the odds. Hold on. I'll pull up the odds. Here's where I'm at. That 
you know, again, after the moves that the Preds made after last year, I, I thought they were still going to be a couple years away. I was, you know, they went on that big run uh, to be able to, to get a chance to, to make it to the playoffs. I just don't think yeah, they have the guys, good. you know, in, in a series to be able to, to beat the team that they're going to play. Who, they open with the Stars, right? They open uh, with Dallas? I believe so. Uh, I believe so. Their, their odds are plus 6,600 right now. To plus win it? 6,600. Oh, Stanley God, Cup. it's not good. And so yeah. they, they do play the Stars, right? I want to make sure I get that that correct. Um, there's still some games. Yeah, they still have a good amount of games. Like, yeah, but I think it, there's a good games. chance it's going to be the Stars, I believe. Uh, but no, look, at the end of the day, I'm glad the glad the Preds made the playoffs. I, I don't think they're good enough to win it, especially when you look at the Blues, some of these no. other teams. Um, I, I just think they've got too much. It, it would... They would have to catch damn near every break. That would be a true Cinderella run if the Preds were able to even get yeah. back. You two Soros would finals. have to get heck of hot. Like it, it would, it would have to. Everything would have to perfectly align. I don't think they can get away with anything, William. That's the problem. I don't think they have any no. margin for error against some of these no, top lines. I think lines. they're slated to play the Canucks. The actually. Canucks right now, okay. Because they'd still get the wild card one. I think Vegas. Vegas looks like they would play the stars. Well, we may do. We may, William. We we may do an NHL bracket once this thing gets out too. Because look, playoff hockey. That would that's, be awesome. I, I will be glued playoff to the hockey. TV with yeah. some playoff hockey. It's. I would. I'd rather watch playoff hockey than the NBA playoffs. Yeah. Just gonna be I, honest with the, you. Yeah. Give, give me your Cinderella picks for the NHL playoffs. Preds. The Philadelphia Flyers. Preds. No. The Philadelphia um, Flyers. Rock with the home William, team. I need. I what need to see. Joke. I need. Yeah. To see that. <laughs> I wow. need to see the matchups and the paths first before I do that. Um, it's just like with, with college basketball and the NCAA tournament. I need to know what region you're in. Who, if you were to sneak around and win a couple games, would you play in the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight? I need to see the matchups and the paths first. We'll do that for you when that comes out. Appreciate it, William. Great call, I mean, You William. sound scared to me, but I'll hold you to it. Uh, look, William. Like, you can never go wrong with the Bruins or the Rangers. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly right. That's not Cinderella. It's been a good couple of years for the Rangers, for any team named the Rangers. But, William, I appreciate it, buddy. Hey, uh, talking Thank about you. hockey, there's a Kirk from Canada on the line here. Uh, Kirk, what's up? Kirkonius. Kirk. Don't be shy now. Stop eating those ch- fries and gravy and answer the phone. Kirk, no, speechless? Is this Skyhook? Is hey, he? guys. There he Kirk, is. Kirk, what's up? Yeah, Took you a while, Kirk. What happened yesterday <laughs> with the Flyers? Yeah, what happened yesterday with the Flyers, Kirk? They decided to win for the first time since March 20th. Mm, I where saw they were up 4 nothing. I think. Where's it? Where, where are we at right now in the bet? What happened to your team, Kirk? Uh, doesn't matter, but... Oh, we're it does. They were plus 16, so even if the Flyers win their last two games, that puts us plus 12. That means the Leafs only pick, need to pick up one point in their final three games for me to win the bet, boys. <laughs> so what you're telling me is that's a thread of needle. Which so I've been doing my whole life, chance. Kirk. My what whole life. What the odds yeah, of us well, getting together are? Like one in a hundred? Like more like one in a million. <laughs> okay. Uh, You're telling me this way. The Flyers would be fortunate if they even make the playoffs this year. They uh, <laughs> they fell apart. looking in right now, Blaine. Hey, look. The, oh, what, yeah. what you're telling me is there's still a shot. There's still hope, <laughs> Kirk. Right? There's still hope. That's true. Kirk, I'm going to yeah, tell you, if for uh, some reason... They don't pick up that point, and Flaming Dragon wins his bet. I'm gonna be hell on this app. Yo, no, like he will be up at the northern border. <laughs> oh the yeah, next day We're knocking at your door, like flying over the chimney. Front door. Oh, I was so. All we had to do was make it to overtime last night against the Devils, and the Devils scored with like a minute and a half left, and I was like, no. Oh, way. I was tracking yeah, this no last way. night. I saw them. They were three three, I believe, and y'all were up four nothing. Yeah, at one, one four one. 4-1. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't know how it finished, but yeah, I know how to see if Michigan will come back on Boston College. Well, we'll, we'll know it. Monday. America sure. wins again. I see Maple Leafs odds right now, plus 1,500 to win the Stanley Cup. Maybe sprinkle 10 bucks yeah, on that. Better than the Flyers. Yeah. Okay. yeah well, it doesn't well, matter who wins that. Point. It only matters who wins our bet, Kirk. Don't make this about something else. <laughs> Well, Samson, I'm worried about our goaltending. We, our goalie led in six goals on like 24 shots last night. That's not no, going to take no, you. Hey, yeah, sometimes you've got, you got a bad day on the ice, Sam's man. If Austin Matthews scores seven, it's who cares? True. Definitely. Hey, speaking of Matthews, he scored 68. I told you guys when he, when we had 10 games left that he probably wasn't going to score 10 in the last 10. 
Uh, he scored eight in the last seven. So yeah, it's two yeah, more. He, he, get to seventy. If he, if he gets one more goal, if he gets one more goal in the next three games, he's tied Mario Lemieux as the most goals in the in the modern salary cap era with sixty nine in a season. So that's, no, he's uh, incredible. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. He's the Tyreek Hill of the yeah. NHL to me. Kirk, when's the last time a, a Canadian team won the Stanley Cup? Uh, why do you have to ruin a good conversation? <laughs> oh, no. Kirk! I Kirk. actually thought he was genuinely asking that. Kirky! Hell, I didn't think I was alive. <laughs> hey. Has it been that long? All right, it was 1993. All right, it was I wasn't alive. Years ago. Yeah, I Are wasn't alive. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Well, I can't there's been, that. well you say Canadian. that, but I'm sure... Most of the NHL teams that have won it have a lot of Canadians. Don't matter. Doesn't matter. That doesn't wow. matter. Wow. I did not know that. All right, Kurt. Great talking to you, Kurt. Thanks, buddy. Hey, call in when these playoffs start, all right? Uh, Monday. All right, let's go to Matthew in Ohio. Matthew, what's go. up? It's your boy, Nighthawk. There what's he is. What's up? Oh! Yeah, so uh, UFC 300, it's such a monumental event. I figured I had to call and do some previews here if you boys are ready. Go ahead. Can't dude. wait. Yes. All right, so we'll start with the early prelims. This is at 6 p.m. Eastern time. We've got uh, Davison Figueroa versus Cody Garbrandt. And, David, I want to start off the bat by it would be a safe bet to have Figueroa by KO or TKO. Thank you. Because we all – we all know Cody Garbrandt's got a glass chin. Uh, it's just unfortunate, but that's just how it is. Night, that's night. exactly why. That's what I said. That's why take him. That that bet's at plus one. What was your parlay again? It was so. Well, I'll I'll get to the parlay in a second because I want your thoughts on that night, Hawk. But the Figueroa, I was thinking the same thing. I mean, that guy's been knocked out what several times now. Clearly, the chin is just not up to, you know, what we've what we're accustomed to in the UFC. And plus one seventy five for a KO TKO. I love that bet. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, uh, Figueroa is known for his power as well. I mean, this guy fought at flyweight. He had no business being there. He was way too big for flyweight. So moving up to bandweight is big. And Garbrandt, since he won the belt originally, he's only been three and five since then. So yeah. uh, he's not really accustomed to winning anymore. Where Figueroa, I mean, he was a champ at flyweight. He moved up to 135 and won his first fight there. So I think that'll be a big factor with the whole uh, chin advantage. Love it. Okay, uh, second fight is going to be on the prelims. And uh, Jake, you mentioned it earlier, Holly Holm and Kayla Harrison. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about this fight is because it's Kayla Harrison's UFC debut. She's a gold medalist in judo. Uh, she's a stud. There's a reason why the UFC wanted her. But Holly Holm, I mean, she's a seasoned vet. So this isn't going to be an easy task for Kayla Harrison. No, it's. I think it's a great... It, it, it's it's a good matchup for her from a brand standpoint to make her debut in the UFC because again, like you, I've I've heard some things about her. I really haven't watched a, a ton. Who do you like? Um, you know, I'll, I'm going to take Kayla Harrison. I will yeah, go with wow. the high. It's just Holly Holm. She'll always be known as the giant slayer as she took down Ronda Rousey. But mm -hmm. I think Kayla Harrison just has all the hype and uh, technique and skills to win this fight. Youth, baby. Youth. I don't really watch the women fight as much. Well, her. Yeah, well, I tell you what, there's some, when it comes to win, like women's UFC fighting, like women's fighting is up there. Well, like Zhang Wei Li, thing. like it's Wei Li is fun to watch. Yeah. I enjoy it's not a talent thing. Wei Lee, for me, yeah, it's just I just don't like watching the women get beat up. Even though I will say, when we went to the Nashville UFC fight, the that uh, female bout was one of the most exciting of the night. Yeah, so they can be very entertaining. Yeah. Well, it's if they're just, beating up each yeah. other, it's like as long as you know. They don't put another dude in there like they did with with Fallon Fox or whatever. He's hey, fair enough balls. on that point. Right now, Holly Holmes plus three thirty. Wow. So they think Kayla Harrison minus four twenty five. Mm -hmm. Did Holly Holmes cut a bunch of weight for this fight? Uh, I mean, the women don't cut as much weight as the men do. Amanda yeah. Nunez obviously will be known as the most who cuts weight. She she's really big, but uh, as far as Holly Holm goes, I mean, she probably may cut close to fifteen pounds, which isn't as much as some of the okay, others. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So, uh, what about Gaethje Max Holloway? Is that one is that one yeah. going to happen? Oh yeah, that's the fight. That's exactly what I wanted to okay. talk about there. Uh, this to me has shades of Michael Chandler versus Justin Gaethje. Uh, it's going to be an all-out brawl. I've actually been calling for this fight for over a year now. I actually tweeted out to Dana White. I said, you need to make this fight happen. 
uh, because Holloway is really big for featherweight. And he kind of was just sitting idle because of how dominant Volkanovski was. Yeah. That he didn't have anywhere to go but here. And he fought Justin Gaethje at 155 before. And it was an all-out brawl then. And I expect this fight to be an all-out brawl as well. But you're not going to see a single takedown attempt the whole fight. You're just going to see them throwing hands. Them robots. That's exactly. what I want to see. And, yes. It, well, Blaine, you talked about it earlier, but Max has never been knocked down ever in his career. No, That's no. how much of a chin he has. He does not spar. That's a fun fact. Is Unlike other fighters, uh, really? Max will not spar during his training camp. And it seems to be working because yeah. he's yet to be knocked down. Dang. Yeah, so, this, this, this is going to be a fight. This is going to be a fight. This is going to be a brawl. Yeah. yeah and well, sign me up. That's what I'm right here now? to watch. Plus 130 on Max Holloway. So what do you think about my four-fighter parlay here with Perea, Bo Nickel, Aljo Sterling, and Figueredo at plus 272? Oh, I would would take that all day. Actually, the only fight there that's going to be tough is the Perea fight because Jamal Hill is a stud on his feet. Um, Bo Nickel, I mean, he's a heavy favorite for a reason, uh, but the Aljamain Sterling, in my opinion, should be the biggest, actually, uh, favorite on the card because mm. he's fighting a boxer in Calvin Cater. And Calvin Cater, I like the guy, great boxer, but does not know how to wrestle. And Aljamain Sterling has actually probably. I don't know much about him. I don't game. know much about that. Yeah, I've never heard fighter. that name. Is that all favorites in your parlay, Dave? Uh, <clears throat> yes. I believe so. Yeah. Well, I know Pereira's like minus. Uh, Pereira all four like of those, that. all four of those uh, are favorites. Uh, Pereira is the closest one out of all that. I'm taking Max Holloway as an underdog at plus 130. I may think about putting him into a similar parlay. So I have a five fighter parlay. I don't know what the odds on that would be. But I also want to do one separate, just so that doesn't. Yeah, bust you it. see, like when it comes to be- UFC betting, all the people I know who bet UFC, they take money line fighters. They not a lot of prop bets. Yeah, they just straight money line fighters. Mm-hmm. Well, Matthew, great stuff, man. Anytime we got a big UFC card, you got to call in. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be there, boys. Thank you. All right, all right buddy. appreciate Thank it, man. You. Thank you. Let's go to Peter in California. Peter, what's up? Hey. Yeah. Good morning, Jake, Blaine, David, and Justine. What is up? Good morning. What is up, Pete? Well, good morning to everyone except the Purdue Boilermakers, the Heisman <laughs> Trophy Committee, and the CFP. They can all get off my lawn. Tell yeah. them, Pete. Preach. Let them know, Pete. Yeah, definitely. Well, first up, OJ Simpson is absolutely 100% guilty. Agreed. I'm not <laughs> shedding a tear. Me either. <laughs> Anyway, I'm looking forward to watching the Masters this weekend. I predict that Scotty Scheffler, the favorite, will win that green jacket at Augusta. I'm also happy that UConn won the NCAA championship. And the fun fact, I played the second chance NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament Bracket Challenge on ESPN's website and correctly predicted 14 out of 15 games. That a boy. State versus Texas was the only one I missed. Where did you finish, like, in the in the second chance? It was, like, 5,187 that's points. Good. That's really good. It was it was very competitive. There were there were lots of people who filled out brackets on ESPN's website, but as a leaderboard, well well, I gotta tell you, I finished actually I finished two thousand four to twenty third. Yeah, so that's really good. I've ever done. That's yeah. awesome. Love to hear that, man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Thank man. you, Peter. Hey, appreciate you, buddy. Have, Have a great weekend, all right? Hey. Enjoy the Masters. You too. Have a great weekend. You hey, as buddy. well. Let's go to Tommy in Kentucky. Tommy, yeah, yeah, yeah. how you feeling about your new Tommy. ball coach? Hey, fellas. It's uh, Tom Cat Bobcat here. What's, What's up, up, brother? brother? Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Uh, Thank you. Mark Oak, I'm just um, – it's it's kind of frustrating, you know, having yeah. all these uh, top choices, and then we wind up with Mark Pope. It's really frustrating. And uh, just want to let you all know that it feels like BBN over here is pretty frustrated with it mm, and yeah. um having having jack pilgrim on the other day that was awesome so appreciate that no dude yeah. jack does a great job tommy i, I want to ask you this man um obviously you've got a pulse on, on how everybody feels and it's not a huge name and i don't want to make sure everybody understands again like i'm happy for mark pope mark pope did nothing wrong mark pope got offered the job by his alma mater the place that he loves and he took it but like what on his resume like how in trouble is mitch barnhart you think like is he I mean, if, if this goes sour quickly, I mean, is he cooked? Yeah, I mean, that's that's why I'm sitting here thinking. And, and 
I I agree with what y'all said earlier. You know, two years max, and I got nothing. I got nothing against Mark Pope. You know, I've been I hope it works out, life, man. I hope he does I well. Do I do too. Yeah, same. But I just have a feeling that it's it was a reach, and this was a Barnhart call all on his own here. Yeah, it's settled, settled. Well, and and my thing too is it's. I feel like this just got rushed after a couple people told you no. Like just because a few girls sure. at the bar say no, I don't want to dance with you, doesn't mean you you just go out and and just go blindly kiss somebody that you run into. Like it's, it's not how it works, especially with the transfer portal now. Hell, you can build your team three weeks before the season starts. It's Kentucky. I'm not worried about getting good players there. I just it just felt forced, man. Why not? If he would have taken the job. Go out and just get Rick Patino again, man. A lot more people would be happy yeah. than 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 with Mark Pope. Yes, I agree completely. How much of this decision? Sorry, how much of this decision also like does this have to do with Reed Shepard trying to keep him around? I mean, if you're making tired. decisions off one player, uh, then you're screwed. You're already behind. Because I know he played with his dad. If you're right? Reed Shepard, Mark Pope played with Reed Shepard's dad. Interesting, okay. right? And, and I think Reed Shepard's what. Projected lottery pick? It's top five pick. Yeah, like, I'm, go I'm gone. Bye, <laughs> bud. Hey, congrats on the job, but right. I'm out of here. But if you're making decisions right. on one player, you don't need to be making decisions. Like, if, if that's what right. it comes yeah, down totally. to. I totally agree. So Last thing, I uh, just wanted ahead. to say, uh, you guys are great. And uh, David Cohn, you're class act. I want to throw that out there. So Thank you, sir. You guys for taking my call. Tommy, hey, anytime, buddy. Thanks hey, Tommy, for call in more. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, good, good luck. Good luck. I've got no ill will toward Kentucky. I know how passionate you guys are about your hoops. Let's get one more in quickly, guys. Let's go to Timothy in Green Bay. Timothy, we got about 30 seconds here, man. Get yeah, out. 30 seconds, well, a lot of pressure. Happy <laughs> Dragon I, Friday. I believe in you. Welcome. Though. Hey, I'm doing good, Timothy. I'm doing good, aren't I? All right, all right. <laughs> I was going to talk about NFL rules, but I can call about that next week. Quick. No, go ahead. Go what are your ahead. thoughts on it? No, go ahead. Tell us about the NFL rules. I think they're awful because how can you officiate? And, uh, I mean, I was just going to ask you guys your angle on what the NFL wants. I understand protecting QB because that's the moneymaker for the NFL. But why protect every little thing? I don't know. It's, it, you what know I'm what they saying. want? You know what they want? Points. That's what they want. Yeah. Even more than that, they want to globalize. Like he wants – Roger Goodell wants the game to be able to go all overseas and make it something between what we've had and between soccer. Yeah, right? which yeah, part of me – I'm, I'm kind of – I love football so much. I think I would love for every other kind of football. Yeah, but I don't want football. to change the game so much. No, no, no. Well, game, well you don't have to change the game. They already they have, like, NFL have Europe. To. They're going to have to. The, like, you talking have. about rules-wise? Yeah, like, that's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing. I mean, like, why can we not just build a 100-yard field in, like, Germany? Like, <laughs> it just you said we're already 2-0 and against the world. What do we care? Yeah, yeah that's, like, well, it's slowly turning into 7-on-7. Seven seven. Well, if you're, if you're talking about the rules in-game... Like that, that are being changed to me. That that has nothing to do with where the game's played. They want offense. They want points. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. Why do you think that eighty percent of these rules, that maybe even more than that, we need to actually find that out. Why eighty percent of these rules are hindering the defense? Yeah, it's making it harder for the defense. You can't touch a receiver after five yards. You can't hip drop tackle somebody. Hell, you can't really even tackle the quarterback anymore. You got to hit him in a in a spot that Mark Wahlberg from. That sniper movie couldn't hit if you asked Shooter? to. Shooter, and if you do yeah. that, right, and you make it high-powered offenses in, in American football, what does that take market share away from? Soccer, which is a low-scoring game. Yeah. So I think they're really thinking, hey, we could expand in Europe if we have high-flying offenses. Yeah. And obviously, it's always under the guise of, well, well it's the like less, and the less That's what we're always And the less hear. physical the game, the better for the offense. Well, I'll say this. The last time somebody ran a hurry-up offense in Europe, it didn't work out too well. Yeah. It was a blitzkrieg? Yeah. yeah. It didn't, didn't end up, didn't end up <laughs> in a great adjusted. situation. But, Timothy, thanks, man. Great call, dude. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, guys. Timothy. All right, everybody else on the line, please call in next week. We'll be here. Yeah, we'll be here on Mon Monday. So I'm going to get to the board. Then I'm going to get to bets. And it's looking like, well, I'm not going to jinx it. I'm not going to jinx it. Let's stay hot. Actually, not hot. Yesterday, golf. Um, first off, Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, you so sorry. Yeah. And also, I would like to take this time to tell Breathing. Xander Shoffley, I will never, ever pick you in anything again. You cost me a parlay last year, and you couldn't beat a guy named Joaquin, who's not even an actor yesterday. So, I saw what you did in the Ryder Cup. It's embarrassing. I'll never, I'll never believe in you again. Is it just me? Or like the, 30 I watched the full swing series. Until they showed the Ryder Cup. Because mm -hmm. we lost that one. Correct? We lost. I didn't watch it. So right when I saw it. Because they came out and smoked Boom, it. Ryder Cup turned it off.
Yeah. I can't watch it. Sick. Yeah, Maybe sick get guys like Xander Shoffley off the team. Get some, some real goons in there. All right, here's what I got. I'm going UFC tonight. Give me Pereira, money line, minus 130. And then Max Holloway, the underdog. Never been knocked down. Not going to start tonight, fellas, at plus uh, an alive 135. Those are tomorrow, aren't they? Uh, oh, God, they are, are, they? They are tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Now you get to just take extra Well, bets. now I got excited. You're safe. Hey, you're in the trust tree. Yeah, you're safe. Um, Scotty Scheffler, way to show up yesterday. Hit for the under 71 and a half. Still waiting to see on my Kepka Spieth bet. So today I'm going to take Max Homa to finish in the top five for round two. That's plus 160. And I'm going to take the Red Sox Angels nerfy. No runs in the first inning. Plus 100. All right, 0-0 yesterday. Great bets. Both my bets got postponed. Losers. All right, I'm rolling with the nerfy train again today. Give me Milwaukee. And the Orioles going off at a nerfy. That is minus 136. Got Peralta and Wells on the mound today. Both those guys can sling it. Then give me Rockies and give me the Blue Jays with another nerfy. That's going off at minus 130. And Gosman is on the mound for Kevin. Today. All right, Ace. He's going to go Scotty Scheffler, a.k.a. Hi. the chef. Uh, or Chef Boyar 3, as I call him, uh, is the round two <laughs> leader at plus 165. And then he's going to go nerfy. Braves, Marlins. At minus Braves. 115. All right. We'll talk about the Braves, man. About the Mets, man. Braves, 16 like, to 4. And of course, Ryan, like the minute the game ended, Ryan Gate, our buddy on Twitter, oh. just could not wait, just went sprinting to the phone. Worst loss to the Mets since 85. You know, that's where I was listen, on this plan. There's 375 more games to go, though. Let's put it behind us. Let's just beat the Phillies in the playoffs. I'm going to be mad for the love today. of God. All right, let's get some donations. We're going to start off with a $5 donation from Joshua Pazol. Josh, appreciate it. Ultimate villain. Ray Lewis. Is Jerry Sandusky the ultimate villain? Jerry Sandusky's a good one. Not Ray Lewis. I don't feel I don't feel the same about Ray Beat Lewis. Beat man to death and terrorized the NFL for years. I mean, he did terrorize the NFL. Listen, Ray Allegedly. Lewis, there's a lot of stuff off the field. The Sandus, it's gotta be, without a doubt, OJ Simpson, Aaron Hernandez, Jerry Sandusky. You can't mess with kids. You can't, you can't mess, mess with, kids. with kids, man. You can't mess with kids, man. Like, does that make Sandusky first? Probably. Probably. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna burn worse than any of them. So yeah, at least I hope. All right, five dollar donation from Ryan Gay. Yeah. Braves fans are so annoying. Even deaf people tell them to shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Congrats love on it. the win, man. Five dollar donation from Arik Kasky. Appreciate it, Arik. Uh, this Duke fan living behind UK enemy lines is oh. celebrating today. Oh, God. Who knew all, all the Cardinals Kentucky picked the next UK coach? How about how, if you're a Duke fan that's living in Lexington or around Lexington, I would be wearing every piece of Duke apparel I had today just out. I just walk around the city. I don't even need anything. That's just, but I'm, I'm like that, so. All right, let's go to a $2 donation from Justin Alfiero. Justin, thank you. Says, doesn't this feel like vanilla? Villanova, excuse me, 2.0. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. I think that's a good comp. All right, another $2 donation from Taylor Russell. It says, who left the fridge open? Again. Go dogs, baby. Yeah, again. Some big spring games this weekend. Yeah, last donation of the day. Kirk McMillan, $10 donation. If the cancer don't remit, you must run the obit. <laughs> Johnny Cochran, <laughs> probably wearing black, ain't doing it, David. Lose the weight, baby. Lady ballers, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Kurt. Love it. That. Appreciate all the donations. Three pounds today. since Definitely, high school. Man. Definitely. Oh, speaking about high schools, I have an Come update on, here real on. quick from Ryan Keys on social media. He reached out and said, hey, I just watched your guys' mascot episode when we did the most offensive yes. mascots. I live in California and can confirm the Arabs is a legit mascot for a high school. I actually played at that school played at that school during an adult baseball tournament a few years ago. There have been many attempts to cancel their mascot, but they continue to lean into it. It was named after their once large Arab population, and they actually have a bunch of date palms from that area. If you look on the map, there is a city... there is a city not for called Mecca. Yeah. I think it's a typo. But anyway, thanks, Ryan, for the information. Ryan, I appreciate that. If you haven't seen that mascots, the most offensive mascots episode, it'll blow your mind at some of the mascots that have changed now, but some that are still around. So, oh, we got a couple more donations that right, rolled in while I was reading donations. $10 donation from Pokey Texan. Pokey. I held my call for Flaming Dragon Friday and missed out. Go. But I got to clear one thing up for golf v. baseball debate. Round ball, round club, hit it square. Golf is public S and M and slacks slapping balls with a cane. Okay, I mean it's. I, I think it's just so. It's so different. 
Even though it's round, I mean, it's. I just think it's so different. I think it's harder to control a golf ball. All right, final order donation from Charles Dossett. Good yeah. morning, boys. Congrats to Mr. Cohen on all, on all the life achievements. Bo Nickel by KO in the first three. I hope so. Let's go um, too. Last one, five dollar donation from Timothy from Green Bay. Also want to say my coaching career starts Sunday. Let's go. Coaching a seven on seven, sixteen and under team, running that like Mike Leach system. Wish me luck. We're airing it out. Hey, hey. I love it. I love it, Timothy. I'm rooting for you, buddy. Oh, oh. Did Kentucky make the right hire? Ha! No. Yes. 81%. Or no. Yes. 81%. 51%. No, 68%. <laughs> yes, 32. A little more so. I thought it'd be more uh, to the no side. Definitely. I hey, believe. I believe. Job. Play that under Great job. Play that under graphics. Under graphics. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get out of here. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a no hit. That's a perfect game. Let's get out of here. That's a perfect game. We appreciate y'all. Uh, appreciate uh, Walsh for coming on as well. The Honorable Judge Matt Walsh, excuse me. Shout out Z-Biotics, FitBod, yeah. Tax Network USA, Raycon, and the Booster Club. We'll be back on Monday. Enjoy the weekend. And like the chances of Hideki Matsuyama. Pip on a blimp. We're going, going. Gone. I'm becoming a pro at that. <laughs> <laughs>